Democrats must remain on the term in order for a special election to be mandated by charter. Uh, once again, this is going to be uh, seeking uh, a charter change, and as we've stated in the work session, it will seek to have local legislation by the General Assembly, which convenes in January of 2017. Uh, the city attorney and myself and hopefully legislative council will uh, draft up the proposed changes in relationship to this action to be uh, taking place uh, at the next General uh, Assembly session. Uh, we'll be contacting uh, Representative Larica uh, and Senator Harper in relationship to these charter changes. So that is the recommendation as it states today. It's been motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Did I get it all clear? <laughs> we got it until January. All right, good deal. Good deal. Now you can tweak it in the mirror if you want to tweak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, that's all we have from the uh, work session. No more items. Outstanding. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. Consent. Consent, Consent agenda. agenda. Thank you, Jerome. It's okay. Don't forget that. That's why he's our city attorney. Uh. <laughs> well, I can't find it right away. I can do like Stevie. Let me do that. <laughs> Ooh. <coughs> <laughs> also, as discussed in the work session, we talked about a consent agenda. And for the public, uh, just to help everybody understand what a consent agenda is, a consent agenda is a method that mayor commission or any elected officials uh, who convene, I think the school board currently uses a consent agenda. Our local school board correct. uses that currently right now. So it is not not uh, not unformed in our uh, community. Well, uh, the consent agenda uh, primarily focuses on items that mayor and commission have a discussion on in the work session, agenda setting portion, which is uh, before the regular meeting. And they agree on those items in consent uh, standpoint to go forward for one vote in relationship to uh, those actions being taken care of at that time with one vote only. So there may be multiple items up under that consent agenda that will be seeking to be approved without, uh, without any specific uh, individual vote on those items. Now, Mayor and Commission will have the opportunity if they so desire uh, when they bring those items to the consent agenda to remove those if they feel at that time before there is a vote cast that they want to remove that for the consent agenda and have the opportunity to vote on that separately in regards to that. Uh, what we're seeking tonight is uh, the approval of the consent agenda process so staff will have the time to put that together as we as you know we have the electronic process agenda process uh, and staff would have to put that together in that process. So we're seeing if we can have everything completed by uh, September, the first meeting in September. That'll give us this period of time and next month to get everything completed. Okay? All right. Motion to approve. Second motion. It's been motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Now that's all the eyes we have from the work session. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Outstanding. Stevie did better. <coughs> At this time, uh, on the agenda, we have staff comments. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, just want to share some announcements with everyone. The uh, Douglas Coffee County Parks and Recreation Department is taking um, early registration for football and cheerleaders um, this is going on through july the 22nd and then regular registration will be held the 25th through august the 12th um, just want to remind all of our citizens that we have an election day coming up on tuesday july the 26th so early voting is taking place now until uh, july the 22nd um, and that is at the uh, voting office on um, ashley street the Heritage Station Museum and the Coffee um, Historical Society is hosting two temporary exhibits at the Heritage Station Museum. One is on the um, Remembering Coffee County Centennial and the other one is the Carver High exhibit and both exhibits are on display until August the 13th. 
Excuse me. We have two bike to school events that are coming up at <coughs> Central Square Complex. One is on July the 29th. That is a project uh, gift that is hosted by Southwire and other agencies. This is the seventh annual bike to school event. It will be from, um, excuse me, 7 a.m. until 12 noon. They will have book bags, supplies, haircuts, um, finger printing for the kids, hot dogs, and water um, will also be provided. Then on Saturday, July the 30th, um, Bethel Family Worship Center, along with other um, churches in the community and um, different agencies will host a back to school event as well from 10 until 2 p.m. They too will be giving out school supplies and have um, some activities for the kids as well as some free food. Just want to remind everyone that um, please mark your calendar for the upcoming South Georgia Barbecue and Outdoor Festival for um, September the uh, 9th and 10th. We'll bring more details uh, back to you later on the full event. But one thing we do want to uh, push to let everyone know um, about tickets for the Friday night concert. We're offering free admission this year to the event itself. But if you plan to attend, you will need a ticket for the Friday night concert with the headliner being J.J. Gray and Mo Fro. This, again, is sponsored by uh, Brian Norris and um, Rock Dog Entertainment. And you can go online, um, rockdogentertainment.com, for ticket information. Some of the local businesses that have tickets is uh, Full Cold Drugs, Norris Shoe Store, and there's one other one. Well, anyway, Danny's Pizza. That's the one. Thank you, William. Danny's Pizza. So um, you will need tickets for that. And VIP, t VIP tickets have sold out. So um, everyone now is on the early bird special to get your tickets early in advance to get that $10 discount. Um, my last announcement that I want to share is um, on August the 4th, um, the Martin Center, and William is here tonight, and I've asked him to come up and give you all an update. But he's here to personally invite you to the open house that will be held on August the 4th uh, to come out and look at some of the um, changes that have taken place at the Martin Center. So at this time, that's all my announcements, and he'll finish up by kind of giving you all an overview of the Martin Center and what to expect during the open house. Good evening. Um, you have in front of you the uh, print invitation uh, to the open house. Um, the art that's on the open house is actually a rendering that's been done by Dylan Ross that's going to appear in the lobby of the Martin Center. Um, we're going to sell limited edition one, one of 20 uh, for donut donors that are, will donate to um, the renovations, the further renovations of the Martin Center. Um, the focus um, that I came up with is history, culture, quality of life. Those are the three areas that I want to uh, focus on as uh, pertain to the Martin Center. Um, there is a huge amount of support that has come in. Um, Facebook posts were getting 5,000, 6,000 um, views, um, huge amount of community support taking place for the Martin Center. Um, the open house, like Georgia said, is going to be August 4th at 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Um, we have uh, the concession stands in place. There is a uh, coffee bar upstairs in the lobby um, that's just about functional. We have uh, lighting going in on the stage right now. The stage has been painted. The floors in the auditorium have been painted. There's um, a lot to see. So I would love it if every one of you um, came out. And uh, thank you for your vote of confidence and uh, for your trust. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. You. Mm -hmm. Next on the agenda is yeah. I just got a quick staff comment. Oh, I'm sorry. That's fine. We have been receiving complaints about the condition of Webster Way. Webster Way is the road that goes in between uh, Wendy's and Advanced Auto goes from 441 into the Walmart parking lot they have some very bad potholes uh, people are in the understanding that this is a city street it is not it is a private drive but working with the property maintenance code we have come to agreement that all four businesses that share that road is paying to have it repaired and resurfaced and I got the last contract signed today so we just want to let the public know that it is not a city street and that it's the business owner's responsibilities to have it fixed and that's what we're having done now so and, and, 
and to further that discussion, we, we our plans are to hopefully once they bring it up to some condition of standard, uh, they I think the standpoint is they're going to petition the mayor's commission <coughs> to potentially down the road uh, donate that street over uh, going forward because obviously having four different property owners trying to maintain a street of that nature is, is a challenge. But under current policy, they have to bring it up to city standards before we would uh, take it, consider it. So y'all, that may be coming to y'all at some later date. Squeaking wheel getting oil. I hadn't kept squeaking, you had got the oil on that road. <laughs> mm -hmm. Want to Good. thank Roger for thank Shepard and that and Jerome as well for Hopefully, uh, shall we say, slightly encouraging those property owners to do the right thing. Yeah. We greatly Thank appreciate you. that. Yes, great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next on the agenda, we have uh, general comments. Uh, at this time, if there's a citizen that is present, please go to the podium, state your name, address, telephone number, and your concern. No one is present. Sounds good. This is what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to entertain uh, some comments from the mayor and the commission. Uh, let's be mindful of the time. We do have a, a executive session, so we try to get out here at a responsible time. Mr. Roper, start us off. Okay. Good evening, ladies Good and evening. gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see you all here this afternoon. My first thing is that we've been having some sad times in America. This is still America. And I don't like the way it's shaping up. And I would like to say to our police department, don't go back to them side doors. If you got to stop somebody on the dark street, stay behind that car and ask them to get out and come back to you. We want to make sure that we don't lose nobody in Crawford County in the line of duty and nobody citizen to be lost on the road. I know it's a dangerous situation and I'm praying for you. And this is one reason we can't have to get policemen as it is today. People are getting afraid. So they ain't not taking chances, they're just taking people. And then the, now it's a retaliation that's going on. And I don't like the way that things are going. And I don't think we're going to wait till the governor straighten us. We're going to straighten ourselves out here in Cuba. Yeah. We're going to make it right. We're going to make sure in, in the night that our police officers don't stop somebody off on some lonesome corner and get shot. If you can't stop them for a traffic violation, it's better to let them go and to let your life go. Please, sir, please, ma'am, be mindful. Watch one another back. Be careful in your journey through this period. The devil is loose still. Mm -hmm. It's no different now than this was in Solomon Gamal. People is just dangerous. We got too many guns on the street, number one. And me, for one person that used to carry a gun, had a gun permit, do know a gun takes the conversations out your face to put the gun trigger on your, on, your, on your hand. I got rid of mine because of that purpose. Made a mean man out of me, out of tuck a life, rather than try to share or give a life. Let's do this, Joe. I, I appreciate it. Our community appreciate it because I know we're tired of looking over our shoulders. <coughs> if you have to stop somebody at night in them dark corners, let them go. $75 fine ain't worth your life. Don't chase them down where they're going to kill you. Love you. Pray for me and I pray for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rowe. <coughs> Mr. Moore? I want to say I'm thankful to our employees for what they do in the city and job that they do that makes a mayor commission look good and we thank you for doing it ask you to continue thank you thank you very much <coughs> mayor pro Temp. thank you mayor i'd just like to say uh briefly uh that we're asking for continued prayer for our nation our communities uh we are in some terrible times and uh you know it, it's just really sad you would think that we're in this 21st century that we will have better relations with with each other and know how to work along with each other and get along better but it's it's just really sad and we just got to continue to pray and <coughs> ask god to intervene uh, and i pray for the families all families the officers the civilians everyone who's lost their lives 
to uh, to stuff that just doesn't make any sense. Um, <clears throat> also, I like to add, you know, recently we went to GMA for our annual uh, meeting, GMA annual meeting in Savannah, and I had an opportunity to take a class. Uh, one of the classes I took was social media. I took two classes there that weekend. I took a social media training, and it was really good that I took it, uh, being that the controversy that had been going on in the community, um, the, the uh, instructor was saying that as elected officials, you know, sometimes you come against scrutiny and, and it's best not to, to argue. You just go on there and just maybe state, give a response, but don't get into a debate with the people. And that was very informative to, to me. It really was. Uh, and they were saying, you know, they know that we are all human beings, but when you're an elected official, you have to try to handle yourself a little differently on, on social media. So I really enjoyed that, that, that training. Uh, lastly, Mayor, I have a young man that's here with us tonight. Will you stand up, Mr. Um, Youngo, Thomas Youngo, State, go to the um, podium for a second. Mr. Youngo, his father just and mother just recently opened a business here in, in Douglas, and I met them at the ribbon cutting the other day. Uh, they, they, they've opened handbags and more. And uh, the, his dad told me that his son recently graduated college. Uh, I think you, ha in, what's, your, what's your major? Tell us a little something about your major, but he's interested in how government works. That's why he's here tonight. But tell us your, about your degree and what you're here for. Good evening, everybody. Hello, hello. Good evening, Good evening everyone. Hear you. Good evening. My name is Thomas Yango, like Mayor Pearson said, Mayor Pro Tem Pe uh, Pearson said. I just graduated from Armstrong State with a major in theater and I have a minor in mass communications and political science. Okay. The reason why I came here today is because my family, we just moved here to Douglas from Warner Robins, Georgia. and I just wanted to come and introduce myself so that you know I exist, um, that you know that I'm here in the community, that my family's here in the community. Um, and I also, I've always had an interest in politics and in government and how government works here in America. So I came today to just 